Hey everybody, just checking in. It's been a while since I've done a video, so I thought I'd put something out. I'm calling this one Confessions of a Faith Leader. This has been the most challenging year of my life, as I'm sure you're saying too, whatever your job is, whatever your position is, whatever your assignment is, this has been a challenging year. You know, I was thinking the last little bit, I just, you know, God, where do we go from here? What do we do? And realizing that I am just feeling this loss of control, which actually turns out is not a bad thing. Loss of control means that we're completely dependent on God. And so I think there's lots of places where he's allowed us to get to that point where we're leaning into him for everything. But I just wanted to share a thought that I had um, for those of us who are in the province of Alberta. Everybody's going through COVID and everybody's going through loss at different times, but our province has got a particular mandate and a particular prophetic assignment. And so for me, um, I've been really big on that, really big on, you know, talking about where our province is called to be, what we're called to do, um, praying for our leaders. I keep in good contact with our government officials, that kind of stuff. But you know, the other day I was out walking my dog and I'm walking past the back of a house that's got a Canada flag um, in their backyard. And I looked at it and I just like, grimaced a little bit and uh, realized, you know, I had the other day before that come across this ad for a Canadian flag t-shirt, something that I would have bought previously. And I had just scrolled past it and went, you know, whatever. And so as I'm walking past this Canada flag, I felt like the Lord say, what happened to stand on guard for thee? And I felt this check in my heart that, you know, for years, God has called me to stand and to pray and to speak life and to speak the prophetic destiny. No no matter what else is being spoken, speak life, speak what God has said over this nation, speak this calling that we've got to rise up, to bring healing to the nations, that we're meant to be a blessing and that within that nation, our province is called to carry the heart of it. It's the birthing province. And so, you know, I've carried this for so long and yet I had hit this point where honestly, I was just frustrated and tired and weary and, you know, yes, still praying for leaders, but so over it, so, so frustrated. And I just, I felt this nudge of the Lord um, to come back to those heart things again and to be reminded of what he has said, be reminded of what he has called us to, be reminded that he is faithful. And even though everything else shakes and shifts and moves, he doesn't, he's the constant. And Proverbs thirteen twelve says, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. And this hope deferred makes the heart sick um, kind of has hit me in the sense that I have been looking for outcomes to change. I've been looking for people to do different things. I've been looking for people to stand up in different ways. I've been looking for votes to go different ways. I've been looking for uh, bills to not pass that have passed. I've been looking for things to shift into a righteous place that haven't shifted. And um, man, that is hope deferred and it has made my heart sick. And I just had to come to that awareness that like, wow, my heart actually has given up hope that this could change. And that is a warning shot. So here, true confessions from a faith leader. It is possible even as a pastor, as a leader, to just get so discouraged that it's ever gonna change that you almost quit hoping at all. The the issue connected with that is that if there is the ability to lose hope, if there is the ability to be disheartened and to uh, to feel disappointed, it means that our hope was in something that it shouldn't have been. And so I had to come to the realization that I had let my hope land on people, on situations, on votes, on bills, on policies, and stepped away a little bit from what God had called me to focus on. Jude 1, 20 to 21 says, but you beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Keep yourselves in the love of God not keep yourselves in politics, not keep yourselves informed, not keep yourselves just writing letters and believing the best and speaking life and, you know, whatever. And all those things are important to do, but keep yourself, keep your heart, keep your focus in the love of God. And the rest of that becomes the product instead of the motivating force. So this higher call, this higher purpose is about pulling on heaven to see his kingdom come, his will done on earth as it is in heaven and not counting on man to do it. Psalms 108, 12 to 13 says, give us help from trouble for the help of man is useless. 
That couldn't be more blunt. Give us help from trouble, for the help of men is useless. Through God we will do valiantly, for it is He who shall tread down our enemies. And I know that, you know that, but it is so easy, and particularly in the swirl of content that we have around us right now, we have access to so many opinions and so many thoughts and so many beliefs and so many videos and so many teachings and so many reports and so many essays and so many things. And really, I believe God's calling us as believers, as faith leaders, as faith people to keep ourselves in the love of God and to realize that through our God, we shall do valiantly. He treads down our enemies and we do the practical stuff as an overflow from that situation, keeping in mind that our enemies are not people. Even though there are people wearing the faces uh, and, and saying the stuff that carries the tone of the enemy, the enemy is the underlying thing that seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. God has come that we would have life and life abundantly. So looking past the people, looking past the rhetoric, we look for the source. Is this stealing, killing, destroying, or is it life and life abundantly? And discern accordingly, keeping ourselves in the love of God, knowing that we do not fight with flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and uh, heavenly hosts of wickedness in high places. And so Paul told Timothy when he was talking about the hard things that he was facing, the battles that he was facing, he said to endure hardship like a good soldier. So that's the, the way we do it. We, we are meant to endure. We're meant to stand. We're meant to contend, but as a good soldier. And he says in 2 Timothy 2, 3 to 4, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. That again is really clear. Do not get entangled with the affairs of this life that we may please him who enlisted us as soldiers. So from that perspective, it doesn't mean that we aren't aware of what's going on. We're living it, we're walking it. And honestly, from a leadership perspective, what, what has been part of the discouragement, part of the frustration is just watching people suffer, watching people go through things that seem like needless pain, losing jobs, people uh, going through you know mental health issues, depression issues, financial struggles, health issues, like the breakdown of marriage, families it's it's quite overwhelming and so we're in this world but we're not of it so we can't get entangled in that we can't get sucked into being wound into it in fact when the word tells us to wait upon the Lord the word wait means to be bound together with so we're supposed to be bound together with him not entangled or bound together with the things of this world so we we focus in on him we we wind ourselves into him we wait on him so that we please the one who has enlisted us the one who has called us the one who's appointed us and the word promises us that if we make the this our goal that we are we are seeking to please him to to pray to him we're putting a draw on him we're living for him we're serving him we love him we do get to live in the victory Galatians 6 9 says let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up and if we get entangled in these things of the earth we risk giving up. If we let our heart get discouraged, if we put our hope in the wrong things and the wrong people and the wrong places, we risk giving up. And so God is calling us to rise and to stand. Um, last week in our province, I don't know how many people knew, but April 6th was supposed to be our provincial day of prayer. And it had come in a letter to faith leaders just that, you know, the, the province was calling for a day of prayer and reflection. April 6th, I tuned into the online public announcement and I'm thinking and expecting that we're gonna, we're gonna pray as a province. There's gonna be a call upon God and it didn't happen. And just to be very honest, I was offended. I was, I was very frustrated that instead of uh, prayer, we shifted into a lockdown again and um, a little bit more fear and a little bit more concern. And, and the problem was is that the spiritual side was blending together or becoming entwined with the natural because the natural side is lockdowns, it is restrictions and whatever, but the spiritual side is God had released a call to prayer. And so while I'm you know, busy wondering why, why nobody is doing anything publicly. Honestly, I didn't do anything publicly either. And so I'm just putting it out there now. I feel like this call from the Lord on my own life to stir myself up in my most holy faith, to get back in the game, to get my eyes where they need to be, to not be expecting man to do something because the help of man is useless, but God will lead us in triumph. And so um, to get into that place of prayer, declaring life, refuting the lies and the accusations 
accusations and the words of death of the enemy, to be praying for our leaders, to be praying for wisdom and revelation, to be praying for clarity, to be praying that COVID disappears, that there is a move of healing across our province. So I'm asking you to join me. Maybe you're one of the people who also hope has been deferred and your heart is a little sick and you've been a little discouraged and you've become a little entangled with the things of the earth. Maybe join me and we will press in. Let us not become weary in doing good for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So would you join me in praying for our province, for our nation and seeing God's kingdom come and his will done on earth as it is in heaven.